Coming up, demonstrators outside of Valley Hospital tonight taking a stand against COVID vaccine mandates. A sneak peek inside the new Amazon Fulfillment Center set to open this weekend in Fargo. Plus, a blind veteran celebrating his birthday in style will bring you his inspirational message. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Thanks for joining us. More and more businesses turning to vaccine mandates, and tonight at least one group is fighting back. As Valley News team's Alex Larson reports, dozens of people showed up to a demonstration in front of Sanford Hospital. I am a nurse and I, I am vaccinated, but I don't believe it should be forced upon anybody. Pam Giles was among more than 60 people who showed up to demonstrate against COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Instead, supporting a person's right to choose whether to receive the shot. We uh, don't care for what's taking place and stuff here in the nationwide. We want to end up not having mandates and to have freedoms, keep freedoms that we have. Ralliers carried flags and held signs to share their message. I think people should end up knowing, um, they should end up knowing what my sign ends up saying here also, but also they need to end up having freedoms to keep the freedoms that we have. Some demonstrators said they've received the vaccine. Um, I was vaccinated to protect myself. I'm considered in a more at-risk category, so I got vaccinated, but that's, that's my choice not anybody else's. The display attracted the attention from passing drivers on both sides of the issue. Uh, promoting and um, standing up for nurses and staff members anywhere that want to have the freedom of choice, whether they want to be vaccinated or unvaccinated, it is completely up to them. Guile says mandates will cause some nurses to leave the profession. It's creating a worse nursing shortage. There's been a nursing shortage for a very long time, and by mandating such a thing, there it's going to get worse. We're told a similar demonstration is planned for Saturday in Detroit Lakes. Alex Larson, Valley News. Several people we talked to at the rally told us they heard about the event through groups they joined on Facebook. West Fargo schools are asking for information surrounding the theft of district property. It's linked to a viral challenge on TikTok prompting students to steal from their schools. It's called the Devious Lick, and it surfaced last month. Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead school officials all say they've had recent thefts and blame the viral challenge. At Cheyenne High School, more than 20 soap dispensers are missing, among other stolen items. It's not just, oh, we're going to take it and it'll be replaced. It'll, you know, it's funny, it's a joke, it's on TikTok, so it's not a big deal. Um, but that their actions have consequences and, and they'll be held accountable for, for their actions. TikTok has announced that devious lick videos are now being removed from the platform. A North Dakota district judge is facing a drunk driving charge after allegedly crashing into two parked cars in downtown Fargo. Police say South Central Judicial District Judge Sherry Clark, who's based in Jamestown, was arrested after officers responded to a report of a crash about midnight Saturday. Her court records show she'll be in court on the charge of DUI next Thursday. North Dakota is getting closer to getting new legislative boundaries. Next week, the group of lawmakers in charge of drawing the maps will submit their draft. According to census data, the population in 28 legislative districts is too small for their current shape. Meanwhile, 13 districts have too many people. While sitting lawmakers draw the new lines for voters, they're also drawing themselves out of the legislature. When we start at the borders and work our way in, there has to be some places where a district has to be changed. And ours happens to be one of those areas. You know, I, would, I will miss not representing the people of District 23, but somebody else will represent them, and I'm sure fine. Now, other lawmakers who have their homes in new districts will have to decide whether to challenge the incumbent lawmaker in those districts or maybe choose to run for a different office. Minnesota's junior senator joined a conversation today about preserving women's access to abortion and other reproductive services in the state. Senator Tina Smith took part in the roundtable with other lawmakers, doctors, and activists. Planned Parenthood organized the event in response to the new abortion law passed in Texas. Smith says abortion is not a political issue, but rather a personal issue for women and families. She called the Supreme Court's decision allowing the Texas law to stand a, quote, blatant attack on women's freedom. Those that will end up paying the terrible price um, are, are those that don't have the 
um, opportunity to fly to another state to take the extraordinary means that are now required for them to exercise their constitutional choices. It says people who are pro-choice need to organize to ensure their elected officials support women's rights. The new Amazon Fulfillment Center in North Fargo is set to open this weekend. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling got a sneak peek of the place today and reports on what Amazon is offering to attract new hires. Behind me is the new Amazon facility here in North Fargo. And today we are given an in-depth look of the new establishment. You know, it's really an exciting time, you know, to see this thing come from ground up in about a year to offer this facility not only for employment, but for the customers of Amazon who will greatly benefit with the speed of delivery of their services. In an effort to attract new hires, Amazon is offering extra benefits for its employees, including extended time off for paternity and maternity leave and full paid tuition. The starting wage is $15.50 an hour for first time employees and a $3,000 signing bonus. We're looking for full time employees, part time employees. We have flexible scheduling. There's so many different avenues that, uh, that we can go down with a prospective employee. Through the tour of the 1.1 million square foot facility, they emphasized on the importance of safety. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I think, uh, so I've been with Amazon for, for six and a half years, right? Um, and safety has always been uh, really one of the priorities that, that drives all our decision making. With launch day just around the corner, the staff is tackling the challenge, which the general manager compares to a holiday. Looking at it more like Thanksgiving, right? Like a whole bunch of prep and then you just uh, kind of get it all at once and then, you know, maybe you get a nap afterwards. So I, uh, I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be amazing. Um, and I'm super excited to, to, to be here for the, the long haul as well. The staff here is hoping that when this building is fully operational, they'll have 1,000 employees here each day. In North Fargo, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. The Fulfillment Center opens on Sunday. Well, despite the dry weather we have seen over the last few months, we're told it should be a fairly normal season for hunters. Barbara Keller with the Minnesota DNR says deer in particular are resilient and know how to handle changing conditions. While there's been a drop in water levels, many lakes and streams still have plenty of water for deer to drink. Keller says to expect slightly different behaviors from deer this year as they may be drifting to new areas searching for food and water. Hunters might see that deer might be using the landscape a little bit differently than they would um, in perhaps other years. So they should just be more aware of where the forage and water resources are available on the landscape. Now Keller also says hunters do need to be mindful of drought conditions and local regulations when lighting fires or driving through dry brush. We've been receiving calls from some viewers who are having a reception problem with the Channel 11 signal. It's affecting those who are DirecTV customers. Our engineers have been in contact with DirecTV and they have confirmed their equipment is not properly receiving our signal. Our signal is functioning normally. We're working together to get this issue fixed as quickly as possible. Still ahead tonight, how a veteran and former NDSU professor shocked his family on his birthday. But first, Touch joins us with a roller coaster of a forecast. Stay with us.